Okay, so let's try to be a little more precise and define rigorously the limiting process that I talked about in the previous video to calculate the area under the graph of a function. So let me choose an arbitrary function f of x as a function of x. Now this could be the velocity as in my previous video, but now it can be any function. And I want to calculate the area under the curve between x equals to a and x equals to b. The way I'm going to do it is just as I explained before, so I'm going to split this into subintervals and then have little rectangles for each subintervals, calculate their areas, uh, add them up to get a good approximation of the area under the graph, and then take a limit where I send the width of these intervals to be infinitesimal to get a precise uh, expression for the area under the curve. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm splitting that into a certain number of subintervals, all of the exact same width because it's easier computationally. Now, how many such subintervals should I choose? Well, we know that the more subintervals, the better the approximation. But I'll want to send this number to infinity later on. So right now, I'm just going to let it be n. So I have n subintervals, where n is just an integers that I'll send to infinity later on. And I choose them to be of equal width, which I will call delta x. So each subinterval has width delta x. Now I can write an expression for delta x in terms of b, a, and n. The width of the whole thing is b minus a, so delta x is just b minus a divided by the number of subintervals, which is n. Okay, so let me uh, introduce a little more notation. So I'm just going to introduce a notation for these points here. So a here I'm going to call x0. Then the first point here I'm going to call x1, this one x2 and so on. The last one will be xn, so this one will be xn minus 1, and so on. Okay, now I want to calculate the area here, so I need to draw some little rectangles. Right? So let me first draw the vertical lines for each, uh, between each subintervals. Get something like this. And now to draw the rectangles, I need to choose where do I actually draw the horizontal line on the top. Now there's, there's a choice involved here, and in fact we'll see that we can make different choices, uh, but they all give the same answer once we take the limiting process, so as long as we're consistent and make the same choice for all rectangles, we'll be fine. So I'll choose now the horizontal line to be such that it intersects the graph at the right endpoints of my intervals. So I get something like this for these little rectangles. So in other words, the height here of each rectangle is the value of my function at the right endpoint of the interval. So in other words, the height of the interval i is just the value of my function f at the right endpoint, which is given by f evaluated at x sub i. This is my choice here for the horizontal top line. Okay, now with this, I can calculate the area for each rectangle. So the area of the ith rectangle is just given by the width times the height. So this is just delta x times the height, which is f x i. Great, so now I know the area of each rectangle. And so with this, I can calculate uh, the good approximation for the area under the curve by adding them up. So I'm going to define something that I call S n, because it depends on the number of subintervals n, as being just the sum of the areas of each rectangle. So I get delta x times f of x1 plus delta x times f of x2 plus blah, blah, blah plus the last one, which is delta x times f of x n. Great. Now there's a nice fancy notation for this kind of summation in mathematics, which is the following. So there's a big letter here, which is the capital, is the Greek letter sigma, the capital version of it. So it's like an S, but in Greek. What it means is that we're summing here over the expression, so let me write it down, delta x times f of x i, what it means is that we're taking this expression and summing over i. So we first evaluate the expression at i equals 1, 
and then add up the expression at i equals 2 and so on all the way to i equals n. So I get this plus this plus so on all the way to here. So this is a fancy notation to denote this. Now we'll study this notation in more detail in the next video because it's very important, but this is the summation notation which we will use a lot uh, in, in, in mathematics in general. Okay, so there's something I, I should have noted here is that xi here we can rewrite in a better way, say in terms of b, a, and n, right? So in fact, we, we can calculate xi in, in terms of these values. So for example, well, we know that x0 is equal to a, x1 will be equal to a plus the width of my first rectangle. So this is just a plus b minus a over n. Now x2, for example, will be equal to a plus, now I'm moving twice two rectangles, so a plus twice the width of a rectangle, so I get a plus 2b minus a over n, and so on, and then I get that xi is equal to a plus i times b minus a over n, because to go to the xi point, I need to go through i rectangles of width delta x. So in other words, I can rewrite the same thing here as a summation from i equals 1 to n of delta x times the value of my function at a plus i times b minus a over n. Okay, now this type of expression, Sn, has a name. It's very important in mathematics. It's called a Riemann sum. So what it is, is a summation, Sn, which is a very good approximation to the areas under the curve. The bigger n is, the better the approximation is. And it's called Riemann sum because it was first formulated by Riemann a long time ago as giving a good approximation of this area. But what we want is more than just an approximation. So what we want is to calculate, the, have a precise expression for the area under the curve. And the way we can do it, as I said previously, is to take delta x to become infinitesimal. So take our rectangles to be very, very small so that we have a very large number of such rectangles so that our approximation becomes very precise. And if, in fact, we take the limit where the num number of rectangles here becomes infinite, each of which has width, which is infinitesimal, then we get a precise expression for this area. So if we write now a as being the limit as n goes to infinity, so the number of rectangles goes to infinity here, of the Riemann sum Sn, so in other words, of the summation from i equals 1, to n of delta x times f of xi. Now this gives a precise expression for the area under the curve. In fact, it's so precise that it has its own symbol. So we write that as follows. Now what this means, this long kind of symbol is like an elongated s. This is an integral sign. And here, what this means is that we're really doing a Riemann sum, but taking the limit where n equals to infinity, f of x is the value of our function, dx here just uh, replaces the width of each integral. We replace delta by d to make sure that uh, we understand that these are not infinitesimal widths. Now, this whole thing is exactly the symbol that we use to denote an integral, and how we say in words what this means is that this is the definite integral of the function f of x from a to b. And what it gives geometrically is a precise expression for the area under the graph of the function f of x from a to b. Okay, so what we need to do now is be able to evaluate such Riemann sums, and it's really not so obvious because we need to be able to evaluate these summations and the limit process where n goes to infinity. So we'll do that in some uh, simple examples in the next few videos.